Hey, what is going on everyone in the XRP community? Hope you guys are having yourselves a fantastic day today as usual. XRP, XRP, XRP. Not doing much right now. I can already foresee the comments down below. The people that love to use crypto YouTube comment sections as whipping posts for expressing frustration in the market. Oh my god. Oh, Obama Pepe Bonk Inu is up 300% that XRP is not doing anything. Oh my god, all the Solana meme coins. It's a meme coin frenzy, and people just cannot stand to see other coins move while XRP stays still. One thing I have to say, and this goes for all types of investing, the market does not care about your feelings. That's the brutal truth, okay? The markets are like concrete. You fall on concrete, does concrete care about you? No. Does the markets care about you? No. They just do what they do. Okay, right now, XRP is on the brink of a massive explosion, and I honestly believe not that many people are paying attention to it. We have XRP right now in prime market conditions for a parabolic explosion, okay? Listen to me here when I say that XRP is doing an origin cycle historical repeat it is damn near identical not in a literal sense but in a technical sense it is identical and xrp does not have that much time left there's not much left for xrp to do except wait for the inevitable ignition that happens for xrp to destroy macro structure and go back to all-time high price ranges, and hopefully when we get to that point, enter price discovery, you know, because it has been about six, seven fucking years, okay? I understand. I'm a little frustrated too, right? But again, just got to be logical about these things, okay? Yeah. Oh, everything in the market's pumping, and XRP just got like a little tiny pump. I've seen this so many times before. I wish I could understand why, XRP moves the last and the hardest and the sharpest. I don't know why it does that, but that's just the way it has always been. Bitcoin, Ethereum, meme coins, altcoins, microcaps. Oh my God, they explode. And XRP just sits there and does nothing. That's how it's always been. I don't know why. I wish I knew why. That's just the way it works. Maybe one day that changes when XRP is more integrated into the global financial system. And with all the liquidity it can get into the middle of. But for right now, that's what we're going with is the XRP pumps the last, pumps the hardest. Okay. Now, it's going to be a very long video. Do smash the like, subscribe down below. This is going to be just my genuine, honest thoughts on the current state of XRP and where we are going looking forward. Okay. Let's start off first. Okay. Got a lot of things to talk about in this video. First, I'm going to start out with is origin cycle theory. I've talked about this many, many times. I know, I, I know, I know. Okay, P okay. past history does not guarantee like future result. Okay, it's not guaranteed to repeat. Yeah, I get that. But XRP right now is so freakishly similar. It's so odd. It's so weirdly similar. It gives me goosebumps looking at it and talking about it. Because it just seems like this is some programmed AI movement where it's doing the same thing, okay? Of course, when you look at this and you look at this, you must be going like, oh, what the fuck, Cobb? Like, how could this be the same? Hear me out. They are essentially the same. The difference in them and, and why they uh, appear at first glance to look different is because this is, you know, sub-penny XRP, 100,000 volume a day. And this is like, you know, XRP out of the sub penny range you know around one to two billion dollars in volume per day so that's why i do believe because we are at higher prices and much thicker liquidity where it's it's taking longer to play out okay so xrp origin cycle let's, let's just completely ignore um what xrp price is today and just look at xrp origin cycle right what do we got here okay we have XRP, the birth of XRP, July 13th, or July 2013, excuse me. The birth of XRP, right, makes the all-time high run, okay? 
makes the all-time high run. All right, XRP goes to all-time high. XRP has the 90% bear market crash and capitulation. Oh my God, XRP wakes up all of a sudden again, and wow, it's it's back to all-time high price ranges. We're going to the moon. Oh, but you know what? Just couldn't quite do it. And then XRP crashes down again significantly. However, not as big as the initial 90% bear market bottom crash. And then it establishes a level slightly higher than bear market bottoms and does this coiling consolidation move until, guess what happens? Guess what happens? It reaches the tail end of the three-month triangle here. It, it ends up just getting to the tail end, and then it has the ignition phase. What caused XRP to blow up from under a penny to three and a half dollars, four dollars in some countries? Okay. Again, a lot of factors, which is just the general crypto market exploding, but the ignition from XRP, believe it or not, I was watching XRP and not buying it back here because buying crypto back in these times, if you're brand new to crypto, trying to buy crypto in this time, I mean, it, it was just felt like rocket science, honestly. I mean, if you're just brand new to crypto, I mean, brand new to investing like I was, you're just looking at it and you just don't know how to get into it, okay? Now, XRP back here, the ignition of this parabolic explosion... Of course, you had the cryptocurrency market surging. You had Bitcoin breaking all-time highs, entering price discovery, of course. But XRP had two things. There was back here, the Ripple SBI Asia 61 bank consortium in Japan, accounting for 80% of the banking assets in Japan, the third largest economy in the world, pledging to use RippleNet. Shortly thereafter... All of a sudden, Ripple comes out and drops the ultimate bombshell against the main FUD attack on XRP at that time, which was, oh, well, XRP supply centralized. Ripple has all the XRP. They could just sell it all at any time they want to and just rug the market. XRP centralized. Right around here in this area, I don't know pinpoint exactly, but somewhere around here, okay, it's, it's somewhere, it may have been post-breakout. I'm not quite sure, to be honest, but... Somewhere around here in these regions, I know the SBI Ripple Asia was down here, but I think around somewhere up here, somewhere up here, maybe even up there, um, it was the Ripple throwing all that XRP they had into the escrow, ensuring transparency to the market that they were not just going to dump all the XRP all at once and exit scam. Okay. So we had the structure play out. In this manner, and then we had the ignition phase, which was those two pieces of news that I honestly, okay, it might be, you know, debatable, but I, I think back then that's what did end up causing the ignition. Is of course as well as Bitcoin entering price discovery and all these coins surging. Okay, so it's a kind of combination of multiple things, but that was the, my opinion, the ignition phase. So what do we have back there? Okay, XRP all time high, ninety percent. 90% bear market crash, bear market bottom, entering all-time high ranges, but couldn't quite break all-time high, crash again, but not as deep as the initial 90% bear market crash to local bottoms, establishing a higher low, and then all of a sudden this coiling, consolidating, uptrending formation, XRP breaks out. It's doing the same thing all over again, guys. It makes me crazy. I feel like I'm going insane sometimes looking at this chart and Try, like literally trying to make sense of what the future is going to end up being because it's the same thing all over again xrp the all-time high is made the 90 percent bear market crash and capitulation oh the running right back to all-time high ranges oh but couldn't quite break all-time high could we and then xrp crashes again but then you know what doesn't go down below the absolute bear market bottoms it actually establishes a higher low and then has this coiling, consolidating fashion, which is uptrending, and we are literally just waiting for ignition. We are just waiting for ignition. Because right now, the current XRP cycle is highly, highly mimicking its origin days. With the 90% crash, the almost all-time high, the crash again, but not so much, and then a higher low, and then uptrending, coiling, consolidation. It's the same thing. I mean... How, I mean, I would love someone to explain to me, how is this and this 
not the exact same moment. Again, forming that higher low off of 90% bear market crash. I mean, it's just like, I, I honestly, guys, I feel like I'm going crazy here. Maybe I need to go down to like a, like a monthly chart or something. But it's like, dude, how is this and this not effectively the exact same phase of the XRP cycle? I mean, like, honestly, riddle me this. How is that not the same phase? The, you know... Give me a moment here. The one, two, three, four, the drawn out five. The one, two, three, four, the drawn out five. I mean, it's the same thing. It's the same thing happening again. But I think what we are essentially just waiting for, because we are at the tail end of this three-month structure. Again, I like to reiterate, we are looking at absolute highest possible time frame charts that you can reasonably look at before it gets all weird looking. Because, yeah, there is like a yearly chart, but it's just, I don't know, it's kind of dumb to look at. There's just not enough information, honestly. But it's like we have XRP at the tail end of a massive six-year-long structure, and we are just waiting for the ignition, fellas. You, you guys have been around with me on the channel for so long. I know it's excruciating, excruciatingly long patience. But the honest truth is, we are just waiting for the ignition moment. Now, just sitting here going, well, what the fuck's the ignition? What's going to happen? Because just like back down here, okay, Bitcoin breaking all-time highs, Bitcoin price discovery, Bitcoin block word having coming up pretty soon. What's the ignition? What's the ignition here? Because right now, if I'm being completely honest, there's not really hype right now for XRP. I'm not like hating on XRP, obviously. I'm just saying how I'm seeing the market right now, there's there's not hype around XRP right now. There's not this like energy in the atmosphere that are people just, just throwing their money at XRP, just trying to pile in as much as they can. Right now there's hype around Bitcoin. It broke all time high. Entering price discovery, block word having less than a month away. Ethereum, you know, it's just, entering all-time high price ranges kind of following Bitcoin. You got Solana um, just freaking absolutely countering the rest of the market. Um, what was kind of funny is Solana and Avalanche are both up 30% in the last seven days while the rest of the market is going down. And I think the reason for that being is because Avalanche and Solana, um, I don't mean any disrespect here to people that hold these coins, but I, I kind of put them in like the... God, let me get some hate comments for this, but I'm just going to say it. it's just like the wannabe Ethereum category. I mean, I know that's a really harsh way to say it. I don't mean any disrespect. It's just the way I think about them is that they just they saw what Ethereum was has done, what they're doing, and Ethereum with ERC-20, the meme coins, and they just want to try to do the exact same thing. That's how I think of Avalanche and Solana. They're just kind of the wannabe Ethereum category. Again, I don't mean that in a, in a disrespectful way, but that's just, in my mind, how I think about it. Just the wannabe Ethereum. Avalanche and Solana mainly Solana, are both having an absolute insane meme coin frenzy. So right now there's a lot of hype around Solana. There's a lot of hype around Avalanche. These coins are, you know, they have hype around them because their network, their blockchain, um, essentially has a hole and that hole just constantly craps out meme coins on a daily basis and they keep getting flooded with volume and liquidity because this has now become the new age crypto casino. This is the new age micro cap casino. Solana and Avalanche, because on both of these blockchains, uh, I, I do believe they are much cheaper to create an issue and put tokens into a liquidity pool than it is with ERC-20. Like if you were to Google, like how much does it cost to make my own Ethereum token? I think it's somewhere around the five to $10,000 range. When it comes to like Solana and Avalanche, you could probably launch a token, create it, issue the contract, get it on a liquidity pool for like, somewhere around under a thousand dollars so right now you have salon and avalanche just just their networks are exploding with these garbage useless beam coins but people are just throwing money at them like crazy so the point being you have all these coins in the top 10 that like have hype around them but right now there's no hype for xrp aka what i'm trying to say here hype essentially equals the ignition I'm waiting for the ignition. What do we see in the future for XRP? 
where we have the ignition that breaks us free from essentially the handcuffs of this structure because it's at the tail end of it we just recently i mean i did a live stream with like 2000 peak viewers at xrp ran up to about 75 cents just out of nowhere again i don't want to get all too conspiracy about that but i mean some people in my live stream were saying like oh kind of people you know starting xrp etf market buying a bunch because xrp did go up like 20 percent in less than an hour which was kind of an odd thing to happen um so it's like yeah it's just we know where XRP is. I, I do believe it's following origin cycle theory. But what's the ignition here? I mean, we have XRPL AMM coming out on the 22nd. I'm honestly gut feeling not expecting any sort of pump out of AMM. I think it is good for the overall network. It's going to bring more liquidity to the XRP ledger, allow XRP holders to convert their XRP into liquidity tokens and, you know, use those to automatically provide liquidity and earn yield out of the market. I mean, I, I think that's good overall in general, but I don't think XRP AMM is going to be sort of ignition material. What I would consider ignition material be something along the lines of an XRP ETF. I don't know how far away we are from that actually being a real thing, but just the fact if one of these large financial institutions were to just simply file for it, I think that would be enough. Because obviously I think we're still ways away from an XRP ETF being live and tradable, but I do think we are fairly close possibly to one of these large financial institutions such as BlackRock you know, filing it, because after filing it, I mean, oh my god, it's a long process for them to get it listed, but just the fact if they were to file a confirmed legitimate XRP ETF, just to file an XRP iShares ETF, I think that would definitely be ignition material. More on the XRP ETF stuff, um, a tweet that came out recently from Brad Garlinghouse that I find quite fascinating is when he came out on February 20th um, on Bloomberg, and you can see Good Morning Crypto coming in there, and they're asking about the, oh, like the, oh, the BlackRock XRP ETF, and Brad Garlinghouse gives his like, little no answer answer, but he says he thinks it makes sense for the community. And after doing that, he comes out on Twitter, like immediately after, and goes, wow, ran through a lot with the two Bloomberg reporters this in the morning. Uh, why we've been forced to rely on court decisions, not sound policy for regulatory court in the U.S. Oh, a potential XRP ETF. So why would Brad Garlinghouse, after going on mainstream media and kind of given like a beat around the bush, oh, you know, I can't really comment on that, uh, you know, but I think it makes sense. And then to come out and say, oh, a potential XRP ETF, parentheses, exclamation mark, parentheses. I'm just saying, if you really think about it as a, as a CEO of Ripple, coming out to the public with this, you know, oh, okay, you know, talked a lot about this morning, you know, regulatory, clarity, court decisions, and then just sneaks in a real quick, a potential XRP ETF. And then, you know, Ripple's recent acquisition state of custody. My Ripple continues to take compliance first mindset. Just the fact that he snuck this little bit in, and then after what he said on mainstream media television saying, oh, I think it's inevitable. Oh, I know BlackRock has said some things. Oh, you know, I can't really comment on that. Oh, you know, it makes sense for the community. See, Crypto Wolf, now the community's going to go crazy over XRP ETF rumors. Exactly. Because the point is, I think, logically speaking, we are far away from an XRP ETF, but we're not very far off from one of these institutions coming out and just announcing that they are filing it. Because once they file it, we know it's inevitable to come to the market, no matter how long it may take. It is still ignition material for XRP, in my opinion. And again, continuing in the logically thinking area, okay, BlackRock, the Bitcoin ETF, expanding that to Brazil, expanding that globally. Then they file an Ethereum ETF, which is yet to be approved. And BlackRock is literally in the crypto ETFs with the top two biggest coins, and they are just expanding it as fast as they can. I'm just saying... What do they do next? They're not doing Tether. I doubt they're doing BNB. Probably the next one and going to end up being Solana or XRP, which is the next runner-up blue chip cryptocurrencies to get an XRP ETF. And then Brad Garling, I'm just telling you, he snuck that in there. And then to make it even better, you have uh, Charles Gasparino asking the Larry Fink on Fox Business. Like, huh, you know, come on. No, what do you think about XRP ETF? You guys can do an XRP ETF? Larry Fink. I can't talk about it. Charles Gasparino goes, oh, come on. You know I want you to talk about it. Larry Fink. I can't talk about it with heavy emphasis. Again, 
getting a little bit more conspiracy into things, but I'm just trying to wrap my mind about in the near future, what ignition material are we going to have? I mean, at this point, does Ripple just have to come out and just fucking announce something? I mean, there, I'm just trying to make the point that right now we're in this perfect macro moment for XRP, but I am feeling a lack of hype for XRP in the market, which is where I am looking for some ignition material. BlackRock filing XRP iShares ETF. Ripple announcing, oh, hey guys, you know, we're JP Morgan's testing XRP for payments into Japan and the Philippines. Oh, hey guys, you know, Bank of America. Oh, they're using XRP right now for payments into Korea and Thailand. Like, I'm just waiting for Ripple to like, not trying to like blame them, but I feel like they've been too damn quiet for so long where it's like they need to come out to the open market and like say some things. I get it. They're working with big, gigantic institutions, central banks, big, big, big fat cat money where there's a lot of non-disclosure agreements and they got to, you know, keep their lips sealed. But it's like at the same time, though, it's like you got to give the market a little bit of rope here. Like you got to give them something to look at and go, hey, wow, you know that XRP? Hey, they're actually, man, they really are making some progress. Oh, you know what? Wow, they're really... Wow, they got a lot of banking partners. I'm just saying. I'm not like blaming Ripple for not announcing anything. I don't want you guys to take it the wrong way. But it's like, at some point, we have this perfect macro structure. We have this perfect market conditions. You guys, I don't even have to explain that. You guys know what I'm talking about. Like, everything around XRP is fucking exploding. And we just have this perfect structure that is just absolutely cooking up a storm right here for an explosion. And I'm just waiting for... For the motherfucking ignition. Where's the ignition? I don't know what it's going to be. Here's what I think it'll be. Three possible things that could be ignition. I think AMM is great, but I, I don't look at that as ignition material. I, I, cool for the network. I'm glad to see it go live here in about four days if some validator doesn't pull their vote for attention on Twitter like we've seen before. But we either have a big, gigantic institution at least filing an XRP ETF and making an announcement out of that. The second thing of Ignition, I believe if Ripple and the SEC lawsuit like fully, fully, fully settles and fully is over with and done, I think that is potentially another one. I know XRP does have its, you know, non-security status. XRP is the only altcoin in the United States, by the way, with legal clarity and regulatory clarity in the United States. XRP, I just, a lot of people don't know this. XRP is the only altcoin in the world to have legal clarity in the United States of America, aka largest economy in the world. Or I don't know, largest economy could be China. I'm not sure, but you get my point here. XRP is the only altcoin legal clarity. So the ignition I am looking for in the near future, which I think is realistic, is an XRP ETF not being launched or coming out, but I'm just saying an XRP ETF being filed. Because BlackRock's doing Bitcoin, expanding the living hell out of that. They're trying to get that Ethereum one through. They are rapidly expanding. The only next logical step would be XRP or Solana. It's either XRP ETF filed, the Ripple versus SEC case fully settling, and then number three, Ripple just makes this magical, I don't know what kind of announcement, maybe it's the Bank of America XRP utility that they told me to like take down the post about um, back in 2020. Maybe it's some just gigantic, huge name bank that they just partnered with or just now starts using XRP for transfers. I don't know, but it's either those three things I am looking for in the near to medium term future that gets XRP ignition from this structure. Now, here's a fourth little bonus one. Um, so after Bitcoin breaking all time high and hitting price discovery and all these meme coins exploding, potentially if these you know people behind the scenes that behind the scenes that are, you know, faceless and nameless. They just decide to pull a bunch of liquidity from Bitcoin and all these altcoins and rotate that into XRP because it is a tremendously good deal in terms of Bitcoin Satoshi valuation. XRP is currently at these levels in which it does have these ignition moments. It's like, fuck guys. I mean, what? it's like, I feel like I'm going insane here, but I mean, we are on the cusp of an explosion I'm just trying to make sense of like what's going to be the what's going to be the what's going to be the ignition for this explosion. We have XRP market cap dominance at the exact levels in which yeah, it has those ignition moments. It's like everything right now for XRP is utterly perfect. 
but I feel like I am driving myself insane waiting for this structure to break. All right. So, fellas, I know that was a, a very, very long video. Um, kind of maybe maybe I was rambling too much. I don't know. I thought I made pretty good sense, and I was kind of ranting a little bit and going on some tangents there. But that is just my honest, bottom of my heart, honest opinion on the state of XRP right now. Because the block we're having coming up, Bitcoin price discovery does further price discovery, more ETFs, more news, more announcements, more meme coins, more explosions, more parabolic gains. I mean, it's just inevitable it comes around to XRP where XRP has its season. And if we can get this thing to break all-time high this year, enter price discovery, we do have a double-digit XRP in the cards for us in 2024 or early 2025 because we are obviously in a bull market. All right? Thank you guys for watching the video today. Um, really appreciate you guys tuning in. Make sure you smash the like, subscribe down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.